The United States and China bring different cultural perspectives on cooperation and competition to the bilateral trade relationship. To learn more, we spoke with Dr. Josh Keller, Associate Professor of Management at the University of New South Wales. So you spoke with member companies about this concept of the paradox mindset and coopetition in the Chinese market. What do those two things mean? So let me first talk about coopetition. So what coopetition means is do you simultaneously cooperate and compete with other firms or actually within, among people within a firm as well. And so uh, what drives having coopetition is having a paradox mindset, which means do you tolerate the underlying contradictions between being in both a cooperative and a competitive relationship? So in the Chinese market, from a historical perspective, where do you see coopetition taking place? So I see coopetition happening uh, a lot, both in the state, among state-owned enterprises uh, and also in the private sector. And in particular, you see it uh, when it comes to these agglomerated, in industrial agglomerated areas, such as you'll see towns in China where every, where in the whole town they manufacture a particular product. Um, in many cases, they're quite small, these factories. They compete with each other uh, for bids on being able to make products but they also worked closely together, and I was experiencing this quite a bit when I was working in industry there. So in recent years, we've been seeing all these references to win-win um, relationships, win-win uh, cooperation. Um, why is this a uniquely Chinese concept? Is it a uniquely Chinese concept, and where did this come from? So I don't believe that a win-win relationship is distinctly Chinese. In fact, we hear the term win-win all the time here in the U.S. I think the difference is what is the scope of that win-win concept? So I think in the case of Americans, when we think about a win-win case, we think about something that is clearly beneficial to us and clearly beneficial to the other party. And so there's no possible contradiction in terms of what we see things. But where I see it among the Chinese is that the Chinese are willing to more wrestle with that, that the idea is that we see cooperation as a win and we see our competitiveness as a win. And they're able to take a broader stance on that. And I think, so I think that's where the cultural differences lie. So you mentioned in your presentation earlier today um, this willingness um, in Chinese culture to tolerate contradictions. Mm -hmm. um, from a historical perspective, where do you think this comes from? Why are Americans are in the West, why are we less able to tolerate contradiction? So that's a good question. And in fact, uh, some of our research has found that this is highly related to deep philosophical differences. In the case of the West, we gain our categorical thinking from a tradition of logic, dates back to Aristotle. So we, we typically like to see that there shouldn't be contradictions. If we see a contradiction, there must be a way out of the contradiction because, some, because things cannot be um, right and wrong at the same time, or black and white at the same time. Uh, whereas the philosophical tradition in China, in, in many streams of Chinese philosophy, emphasize a tolerance of contradictions. You see it in the yin yang, you see it in uh, Taoism, in, the, in Lao Tzu, Zhuang Tzu, a lot of these different ph philosophies. Uh, and what's more interesting is that these are still shared today among people in China. So you know, most Chinese people don't read the Tao Te Ching on a daily basis, but they're still embedded in a lot of the proverbs that people use, the 
the poems that they talk about, um, manners of speech, idioms. Uh, so the, these get carried on and they get used uh, in, in the way they think about things and they adapt those principles to the way they look at different phenomena. In fact, when we ran one study, we found that if we prime Americans with these dialectical or tolerating contradictory proverbs, uh, that they actually end up thinking and acting more Chinese. Really? Yes. Wow. In the sense that they become um, less stressed, find less difficult when they are facing contradictory demands. So we can see this tension between um, our different cultural perceptions of cooperation and competition. We can see it on the larger macro level, say between uh, the United States and China, but you can also see it um, on, at a smaller level between teams of um, Chinese and Americans, especially in businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted to know, in your opinion, what are some, what's the risk of either side not fully understanding um, the, the culture that um, their teammates might come from? What are some of um, the business risks? So at the micro level, I think it's uh, pretty clear. I think one of the important things to just understand is that um, since Chinese are more likely to feel to be okay about being competitive while being cooperative at the same time, that Americans just, I believe by just being more knowledgeable about that, they'll be able to better manage that. Uh, that they shouldn't assume that when a Chinese teammate is trying to outperform them that they're not wanting to be cooperative. So you don't want to you know, refrain from sharing your information with them for a fear that they're going to try to undermine you. They may try to outperform you, but, they may, but that may not have any material consequence on how you are as a team member, so you, shouldn't, you should try to pay attention to that and, and, uh, and feel uh, that you can manage that more effectively by recognizing that. Um, I think the same can apply at the macro level as well. I think that if we always interpret that Chinese actions in the international arena are meant to undermine America because of the fact that they are trying to be competitive in the world, that we may misinterpret their intentions. That there may be clear examples where they are trying to sabotage us, but there may be other examples where they really are just trying to establish themselves as a key player in the international arena, and that may not have any substantive impact on their capacity to cooperate with us in other arenas. And so I think these same kinds of misinterpretations that we may see at the interpersonal level within an organization, you may find the same may apply at the diplomatic level as well. Wow. Uh, well, thank you for joining us today, Dr. Keller. Um, I think your research is extremely applicable, like we said, both at the micro level in terms of um, businesses, um, but also sort of at a greater macro level in international relations. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.